Never in my life have I seen somebody eat fast food in such a way. I don't know, guys. Does this look like the face of somebody that's seriously happy to you? Now, look, I can't judge anybody for eating some food. I mean, I myself enjoy some fast food. Look at the manner at which somebody is consuming the cane sauce, man. I mean, there's there's got to be a certain limit. Now, I know what some of you guys might be thinking. You might be thinking, Saint Snake, why are we talking about this today? What what why is this so important? Why is she grabbing the cane sauce and, and drinking it straight up, man? That's just it's just not right. But I'm here to talk to you guys about the detriment social media has been doing to our society. No, I'm just kidding because yeah, that would be hypocritical considering I am posting to a social media platform myself. Now think about it like this. Why do people watch mukbang videos? Because me personally, I never understood it, but it's a super huge genre on YouTube and now it's kind of transcending into the TikTok space. Now what kind of baffles me about her videos is that she has she didn't have crazy meals that's the thing because usually the whole mukbang on youtube it's like an entire spread insane amounts of food and there's something about the variety of it but she just gets a couple items from a, uh from fast food places and i think that's pretty interesting because it's something that i'm sure me and you have eaten before so I kind of don't understand all the hate that she's really getting considering she's just getting like normal fast food plates I don't know if that has something to do with the the genre itself. You know, you're transitioning from long form videos on YouTube with lots and lots of food, but now you're on TikTok with more short form content. So you have it like smaller plates. At least that's how I'm kind of picturing why it's gotten to that point where she's just eating like a couple of items. Now, here's my thing. I've heard people say in the past that they watch mukbang videos because it's kind of like they're having a meal with that person. They kind of feel like they have a social connection i mean in this age of people just being so critically online the only time you can really feel like you're sat down and eating with somebody is when you're looking through your TikTok feed. That really is unfortunate. But I also feel like there's a different aspect to it. There's a stigma around YouTubers and content creators that you know work with food and they go from being healthy to being super unhealthy. Specifically in the case of Nikocado Avocado, people are trying to make it seem like she is gonna be the next Nikocado Avocado. Now, I don't believe that one bit because Nikocado Avocado was I mean, he was a completely separate character. I mean, he had to play a different character to thrive in the YouTube space at the time that he did. Uh, I think currently right now he is losing weight, but it was a shock to see how Nick Akato went from, I think he was like 180 pounds to like being severely obese. And I don't mean to say that with no disrespect. I mean, he was, if, from a medical perspective, he was severely obese and he wasn't doing anything about it. I mean, he would still have these huge mukbangs. He would collab with people people who are also bigger people and just eating, 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 eating. Now, this is where it gets to that point where it's kind of like a dilemma, because at what point can you say that they're doing it for YouTube? And at what point can you say that they're doing it because they enjoy doing it? I mean, people eat insane amounts of food on and off camera. I mean, they, people are going to gain weight regardless if they're getting famous for it or not. But when you have a camera in front of your face, it does add a certain incentive to it. I mean, think about it. If you were getting paid to do something that you love, I think you would want to keep doing it even more than you did before you were getting paid for doing it. I think that creates a dilemma where it's like you're getting paid to do something that is inherently unhealthy. To what extent are you ramping that up for the camera? Now, I do think it is important for you guys to see just how popular her channel has really gotten this is jelly bean sweets and she gets millions and millions and millions of views at 20 years old her bio says just a dance and mukbang girl and she has an email that helps out with her marketing i'm pretty sure i'm starting to think that these brands pay her and she got a dr pepper t-shirt eating cucumbers i really think that these brands do pay her because i mean these are all just look she got she got so much taco bell so much wing hut so much especially Taco Bell. I mean, dang, that's her favorite spot. But anyways, guys, let me get back to the point that I was trying to make. I mean, 
I think there's another side to this, really. And it's really actually a sad and unfortunate side. And it's the same reason why everybody was tuning in to watch Fuzzy 2 when he was on kick live streaming 24-7. And it's the same reason why people come back to Nikocado Avocado after so many years just to see what he's doing. And it's because people like seeing a train wreck. And I understand that's not her entire audience. I know there's a lot of people that like the ASMR aspect when she's doing the little clickety clickies on the grilled cheese burrito. You guys have something wrong with you guys. I'm sorry. I never understood ASMR. ASMR, and I especially don't understand Taco Bell ASMR. That's besides the point. There's another group of people like the connection that tune in and they feel like there's a, something personal going on there. So I feel like there's also a problem with that. And then there's a group of people that are tuning in just to see her gain the weight, which is really unfortunate. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this isn't doing harm to her body because it is. But if she's happy doing it, there's a certain extent where we got to accept that this is her choice to do what she wants to do. I see a lot of people like, no, what are you doing? Like, you cannot do this to your body. You're so young. Unfortunately, people on and off camera are going to be doing this to her body. And if she found a way to profit off of it, maybe she would have been doing this either way. I don't think you should put your health on the line for anything, for any job, for any source of income, for anyone, anything. Because even if you were wealthy in some fashion, let's say in currency, how were you gonna be able to use that wealth if you don't have your health? You can't travel, you can't do the things you wanna do, you can't see the things you wanna see, and your quality of life is just lower. Really the main takeaway from this is prioritize yourself, and be happy within your own confines. I mean, there's no telling that she's gonna go on to gain 400 pounds, be the next Nick Cotto Avocado. I think that's people just exaggerating the situation, but I sincerely hope that it doesn't get to that point because honestly, that would be really sad. But anyways, guys, I think it's about time we wrap up this video. I'm sending all love and support for Little Cherry Berry. Jelly Bean Sweets, whatever her name is. If she want the clout, man, she can have the clout. If she want the food, man, she can have the food. As long as she's happy, man, that's what's important. Just, you know, don't pressure yourself into things you don't want to do. Anyways, guys, it's been the end of the video. If you want to see more stuff like this, man, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video, and peace.